Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we'll be discussing a case of a middle-aged man who presented to our ER with complaints of left knee pain. Can we begin, sir? Yes. So there was this one 52-year-old male patient who was brought to the ER with just complaints of left knee pain, um, predominantly on the knee, but it, it pretty much radiated the, towards the whole lower limb. And uh, he had this since about, uh, for about 20 days, 20, 30 days, almost about roughly a month. Uh, in our initial 10 second assessment, patient was conscious, oriented, obeying commands. Uh, uh, moving on to the primary survey, patient's airway was patent. He was able to talk with no uh, secretions or uh, any anatomical defects that were noted on the in the airway aspect. Breathing, he uh, had uh, air intake to be bilaterally equal with the normal respiratory rate of 16 cycles per minute, maintaining saturation of 99% in room air. And then circulation wise, all peripheral pulses were palpable. Heart rate was little on a higher side of 98-99 beats per minute with uh, blood pressure of 130 over 80 millimeter mercury and uh, rhythm was regular in nature. Disability wise, he had a full GCS score of 15 over 15 with pupils being 2.5 millimeters bilaterally reactive to light and uh, uh, no neurological deficits were noted. Patient was able to move all the four limbs despite the pain. So no weakness as such, uh, disability wise. Any pain or any associated swelling also? Uh, that is this. Uh, uh, I will describe that during the local examination. Right? Disability, grossly, he was non-ambulated because of the pain, but no neurological weakness that was detected. Exposure wise, he had a temperature of 99.7 degree Fahrenheit with a uh, blood sugar of 115 milligram per deciliter. So, moving on to our primary adjuncts, uh, there was no uh, immediate need for an adjunct to this patient. So, just an ECG was taken which showed sinus rhythm, but nothing to support the diagnosis as such that could be taken. Uh, moving on to the secondary survey, sample history wise, patient had these symptoms of left knee pain since about roughly a month, a 20 to 30 child, days. Child, oh. young child, means uh, maybe you're 18 years old, female or male. Only one joint is involved. What are the differential diagnoses you tell? One. Uh, this old man, this is entirely oh. different set of differential diagnoses. This is a young child coming like this. Either the patient could have sustained a trauma, sir. Okay, uh, trauma is the most common. Or if a patient has an undiagnosed any bleeding disorders, then even that can cause hematosis. Okay, okay. Septic arthritis causes one. Septic arthritis is very rare in a young child without diabetes, without trauma. Okay. Very uh, very rare. It can occur. Or malignancy like osteosarcoma can be seen in young. What is the commonest yeah. condition in India? Can PB. have patient who are young can have peripheral arthritis. Gonorrhea. Gonorrhea. Child. Child can have gonorrhea. Gonorrhea. But the kids, no, the kids will have epidemic. Rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever induced arthritis. They are migrating. What is migrating? That is, patient will have asymmetrical joint involvement. They'll complain of pain in one joint. Hmm. Then after a while, it will be self-limiting. That pain in that particular joint disappears. Okay. And then the patient will end up with pain in another joint. Okay. So, pain and swelling will be there like classically what you have described in the one joint, especially hmm. peripheral large joint. And it subsides. After that, it goes to another joint. Okay. So, now if the patient present like this, it can, in a young patient, it, first differential diagnosis in our country is rheumatic fever. Okay. It is from a country like US and all. What is the differential diagnosis? Lyme disease. Lyme, Lyme disease. disease. Okay. So, um, yeah, sample history wise, he had the symptoms of left knee pain predominantly that started about four, 20 to 30 days back, but he continues to have it. And along with that, uh, because of persistent pain, he's been non ambulatory for a while and uh, uh, lower limb, uh, the whole of the lower limb, there's radiation of the pain but mostly on the thigh area and the peri, um, periarticular area of the, of the knee joint, left knee joint. Along with this, there is obvious redness and swelling uh, seen on the uh, particular knee. And then a couple of days after the initiation of all of this, patient also developed um, intermittent fever, high grade fever and then periods of no fever, like in, relapsing, uh, on and off fever he had. Okay. 
uh, then um, apart from this, this is just the major complaint, sir. No other associated symptoms of this patient. He came with joint pain. Just joint pain, okay. left knee joint pain, okay. uh, with associated swelling. Uh, and then moving on to the allergy history, he didn't seem to have any. And a little look in the past history. Patient is a known case of uh, um, dyslipidemia. And this is the first episode of him ever having any joint pains. There was no past history of any joint pain, no recent surgeries. What are the no associated trauma. histories you will ask in a monoarticular joint environment? Associated means uh, this can lead to that disease. Fever. Trauma is okay. Trauma is TB. TB. TB as such, uh, it can surgeries. occur, but. Uh, it would be very difficult to present like this. Any recent surgeries? Okay, that is trauma and history. surgery, travel histories. Travel to endemic areas of uh, 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 brucellosis or uh, Lyme, Lyme disease. disease. Okay, then. Then sexual history. Sexual for, history uh, is very, very important. Anybody at this age group coming with monoarticular joint, sexual history and discharge from uh, sexual organs are very, very important. That you have to ask. Okay. Occupation. Occupation, the bursitis and all that. So, uh, uh, known case of dyslipidemia, sir. Then no other previous history of any surgeries done or previous osteoarticular diseases noted. Uh, no recent uh, um, food consumption or even uh, sexual history was also pretty much clean. Yeah. Uh, but he were, he has a significant travel history. Oh. He had been to Gulf country for a couple of for a significant period of time, and there the dietary history that he gives is that he was on regular consumption of um, uh, dietary pro uh, dairy products like um, uh, milk, cheese, all of that. He's had regular consumption of all of that, uh, but uh, that that was the only suspicious a significant part in the travel history. Uh, so after his return is uh, uh, when he developed all of this in a gap of about three to four weeks. So uh, this was his presenting complaints and uh, drug history wise he was only on the statins. Otherwise no other uh, medications. What are the common side on. effects of statins? Um, tendonite that um, myopathy. 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 CK can be elevated. Mm -hmm. Okay. So whenever somebody is coming like this, you have to always check the CK because he is on statin. That has to be done. Then uh, that's about it, sir. So in our uh, moving on to the clinical uh, examination bit, patient was well nourished uh, and well built, no obesity. BMI was roughly about uh, twenty one. Uh, would, would be his BMI? Not 21, maybe more than that. You might have yeah. some wrong calculation. <laughs> he is very obese. Oh, maybe, I don't know, but I <laughs> didn't calculate, but uh, maybe wrong. Looking at the patient, it is more than 21. Okay. <laughs> then moving on to the uh, systemic examination, it was normal, sir. Including the genital area, uh, there was no obvious discharge or any ulcers or uh, lymphadenopathy also was not noted and uh, moving on to the local examination the left knee was uh, edematous uh, um, generalized edema it wasn't a localized uh, uh, swelling and along with this tenderness was there uh, moderate to severe tenderness and it was erythematous and then um, uh, movements were restricted patient was in a, in a neutral in a, uh, position, he he always had flexed, mm. uh, semi-flexed. The attitude would be semi-flexed knee, and uh, he was apprehensive to extend. Oh. So significant restriction of range of movements were noted, but all peripheral pulses were palpable and sensations were also intact. Oh. Then uh, um, and there was local rise in temperature of the knee. So at this point in time, we were suspecting an infective pathology of the left knee and uh, moving on to the investigations wise we did a point of case CBC CRP uh, C total counts came up to be 20,400 with a CRP of 202 uh, then uh, neutrophils were about 93.5 and uh, other parameters were normal including RFT, LFT all the other parts
So this was what was what taken as a point of care CBC CRP. So we were suspecting at this point our DDs were septic arthritis and with this a strong history of a travel history to endemic areas of brucellosis. So we were even suspecting brucella mm-hmm. which is why we sent for a brucella IgM. We collected blood cultures and involved the ortho team for uh, arthroscopic washout. Yes. For immediate uh, analgesia, we started the patient on paracetamol. What was that co- content of fluid? Uh, how much uh, cells, proteins, anything that, uh, It was neutrophilic predominant cells hmm. with increased inflammatory cells were there and uh, they... B- Actually, we should know the count cl- because uh, any uh, septic arthritis count will be very high, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. That range of count you will get. Mm. Mm. It's not noted here. It's not noted here, sir. Ah, but, okay. But so we have to see that. Mm. If it is a simple inflammation due to something else like uh, uh, like other condition like osteoarthritis, age related osteoarthritis, or gout, it will be high, but mm. it will not be high like a septic arthritis. Mm. But the synovial fluid analysis was suggestive of septic arthritis. Okay. So. That means the counts will be very high 20,000, 30,000, up to 1 lakh. And predominantly neutrophils. Okay. And culture may be posture. So, in that, synovial fluid did come as positive, sir. Mm. Uh, it showed growth of Klebsiella pneumonia, gram negative bacilli okay. with subspecies of pneumonia. Okay. And this was sensitive to all the antibiotics mm. and with intermediate sensitivity to imipenems. Mm. So, but that came in much later. So, so okay. for Im- our immediate management for analgesia would be a major concern. Mm. So, for analgesia, we uh, have to calculate the pain score, ask the patient for a pain score grading and then depending on that, we'll have to provide analgesia. So, we can start with either parastamol, if at all it is, pain, patient's pain score is less than 3. If it is more than 4 but less than 7, then in combination with an NAC aid and uh, if it is yeah, more NSA than 7. Yeah, has to be given because it's an inflammatory, inflammatory condition. Thing. If creatinine is normal, if you don't give an anti-inflammatory drug, it will increase. Pain mm-hmm. and inflammation will increase. increase. Paracetamol only, it's a mild uh, anti-inflammatory drug. But it has got very good analgesia. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we'll have to give very high dose. How much dose is required for arthritis? Fever, we Take give 500 mg TAD or 650 mg TAD. Mm-hmm. What is the dose for arthritis? 2 gram. 2 gram. 1 gram TAD is the dose. Okay. Mm-hmm. That much high dose we have to give for the pain relief. Mm-hmm. So, instead of that, uh, if there's so much inflammation is there, we can straight away go for NSAIDs like uh, uh, diclofenac, ketrolac. 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 Mm-hmm. The only thing, since uh, diabetes is there, creatinine has to be normal. So, we started the patient with combination of parastamol and an NAC8. Mm-hmm. And if it is more than 7, then low dose opioids mm-hmm. in, in and titrated according to the patient's uh, tolerance. Then... Uh, uh, after analgesia, the other thing that we can do is to give an IV antibiotics. Mm. But before that, blood cultures have to be ideally taken. Mm. And then um, uh, patient was started on flucloxacillin, keeping in mind the most common cause of septic arthritis to be Staphylococcus aureus. And uh, patient was also sexually active. So, uh, gonococcal arthritis also has to be kept in mind. Mm. And... Uh, um, then along with this, the, the patient was also started on a, a fluoroquinolones, mm. that is levofloxacin was started. So, uh, with this, patient's counts came back to be, um, had a steady fall in the uh, trend was noted in the blood infective blood parameters. And uh, uh, in the meantime, the patient improved symptomatically, arthroscopic washout was also given. So, overall condition improved and uh, a PMR consultation was also given for early mobilization of the, uh, oh, well, no, of the knee joint. You early mobilization, that's right. Mm. See, in a case who is having active arthritis, mm. what no, is the, uh, there is no, Im- no mobilization. mobilization. Complete immobilization is required in an active uh, joint environment. Once the pain leaves, then you can start slowly physiotherapy, no. but not in acute condition. Okay. Acute condition, we should never give any type of uh, physiotherapy for the limb. Mm-hmm. We should just keep it the limb mm-hmm. in neutral position, absolutely, bed rest is required. Mm-hmm. So, At the same okay. time, we have to give DVT prophylaxis because we are not able to mm-hmm. move the limb. We have to give DVT prophylaxis. This patient requires mm-hmm. DVT prophylaxis. Even if the patient is going for arthroscopy, we have to do it. Mm-hmm. So. Um, 
the mobilization was done after a significant well, period of patient being given adequate rest and all that so then uh, in the meantime rosella igm that we had sent in came back to be positive okay. so this patient was this could perhaps have been a complication of brucellosis okay. because brucella can uh, can affect any one focal organ system it most commonly involved is osteoarticular disease mm -hmm. but igm is not a definitive diagnostic test so but suspicion is extremely high in this patient so uh, um, brucellosis is basically uh, so this patient we could diagnose this patient as brucellosis uh, but he also uh, he already got a secondary infection that also has to be treated brucellosis treated. is the primary infection which has damaged the joint but there is already now a secondary infection that we got in culture that culture. has to be treated Ah. both has to be treated mm -hmm. so you have to select an antibiotic which kill both mm -hmm. so there is a gram negative organism one said there is brucellosis and other said now you have to select antibiotics which kill both and which act both uh, both these antibiotic has to act in the both. joint mm -hmm. also so that is very important mm -hmm. so if you start an antibiotic which never enter the joint uh, it may not be very useful So, uh, what else? Now you got a diagnosis of brucellosis. What else you will search in the body? We will check for any skin rashes. Mm -hmm. uh, then genitourinary involvement. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll ask the patient for any uh, pain in the genital area because the second most common mm -hmm. involvement would be orchitis, so genitourinary mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Orchitis or epididymitis has can be checked Other for. Then pulmonary involvement, cardio involvement. Mm -hmm. Then patient can have something called as a neurobrucellosis. Mm -hmm. so then skin rashes can be basically it pretty much affects every organ system sir so one joint that, is involved that means he has spondylitis other joints also involved so you have to look for spondylitis changes sacroiliac changes you have to ask once the patient is improving from your initial problem you have to make out whether any spondylitis is there any arthritis is there, is there. okay so, so how do you pick up all these things spondylitis arthritis sacroiliac specific tests are that either you can go for mri spine with sacroiliac joint or you can go for bone scan mm -hmm. bone scan uh, that is the nu nuclear medicine nuclear test medicine. there you can pick up the inflammatory joint the inflammation wherever there is inflammation in the bone mm -hmm. the tracing tracer uh, element will go and accumulate there mm -hmm. so we can pick up but uh, now only question is how long to treat mm -hmm. so you are you have two conditions one is a bacteria which is gram negative in the joint mm -hmm. another one is brucella in the joint mm -hmm. both requires ne nearly 6 weeks treatment but if there is an another involvement like spondylitis you require to give 12 Five weeks, weeks treatment so that is the only problem so we have to uh, find out whether any other joints are involved or not mm -hmm. so under brucellosis like i mentioned before a most common organ system involved would be osteoarticular so in that also it is either it can present as peripheral arthritis wherein the patient can end up with a condition like this septic arthritis like features or patient can end up with spondylitis one of the most common joints involved would be the lumbar spine and as sacroiliacus like you mentioned sir. so in this patient it was more on the peripheral arthritis setup so um Uh, then otherwise other than that um brucellosis can affect any organ system from brain to what are the differential diagnosis for sac this type of joint involvement in brucellosis like brucellosis can present with sacroiliac joint lumbar spondylitis changes peripheral arthritis all these things are there what are the dds for that q fever lime disease what are the dds for this type of arthritis reactive Reactive, reactive arthritis. arthritis. So reactive arthritis means inflammation, especially urinary tract infection, mm. peripheral arthritis, mm. spine involvement, sacroiliac joint involvement. Then septic arthritis only. Septic arthritis only one joint will be involved. Rheumatic. Rheumatic. Yeah. Huh? Rheumatic arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid. Rheumatoid. No, Rheumatoid. Still not present like this. It presents with peripheral small joint involvement, not large joint. Tuberculosis. Ankylosing spondylitis. Ankylosing. Tuberculosis, tuberculosis can present. Ankylosing spondylitis. Tuberculosis. Rater syndrome. That is reactive arthritis. Hmm. Then psoriatic <coughs> arthritis. Then IBD induced arthritis. So many arthritis are there. Hmm. They can involve lumbar spine, sacroiliac joint, asymmetrical peripheral large joint involvement. 
So, the brucello is a differential diagnosis for ankylosing spondylitis. Okay. Ankylosing spondylitis, young patient. It cannot be a young patient, it can occur in any uh, any adult. What is the investigation you do to diagnose uh, ankylosing spondylitis? Like x-ray so other than x-ray, do MRI, that all we do for this patient also. No? Any specific test will be passed in the HL, HLA? HLA B24. D7. B27. Okay. HLA B27. Okay. Um, so, um, then other than that in uh, blood parameters, the patient can present with anemia, mm -hmm. leukopenia or leukocytosis or okay. thrombocytopenia. All of this has to be watched for and the patient can also end up with either deranged RFTs or LFTs. Mm -hmm. So if at all, uh, the, the regimen for brucellosis specifically would be, um, the first line would be uh, doxycycline, oral which is given for about 6 weeks. And then if the patient has uh, associated liver failure, then patient has to be added on aminoglycoside mm -hmm. like streptomycin or gentamicin. If streptomycin, then uh, for about uh, 14 to 21 days. If it is gentamicin, then uh, uh, up to 10 days is enough. But if the patient has associated um, what is the side effect kidney of, uh, failure, uh, streptomycin, autotoxicity, nephrotoxicity, autotoxicity. No, 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 same. Streptomycin, it is autotoxicity, autotoxicity. less nephrotoxic. Nephro mm. Whereas gentamicin, no more nephrotoxic, less. less no. Then, if the patient has renal failure, then we give doxycycline in combination with rifampicin. Uh, so, uh, rifampicin. In pregnant ladies? Uh, in, in pregnant ladies, again, it depends on what gestational age of pregnancy she okay. is in. If it is less than 36 weeks, then it will uh, be clotrimoxazol with rifampicin. Okay. If it is more than 36 weeks, then it is only rifampicin and no clotrimoxazol. Mm -hmm. But after delivery, it can be given as a non-pregnant non state regimen. That yes. is doxycycline with rifampicin. And breastfeeding has to be stopped until the course is completed. Or you can go for something we can give during uh, breastfeeding. Uh, Septriaxone. Septriaxone can be replaced. So, this would be the regimens for So, this patient, what do you do? This patient has got gram-negative, what is the organism? A klebsiella pneumonia. Klebsiella with uh, brucellosis. Mm -hmm. What regimen you will take? You can take a fluoroquinolone which will act on the gram-negative bacilli mm -hmm. along with which this act patient. Which against the brucellosis. brucellosis. Both. Uh, so, it's a very good choice in this case. With? Rifampicin. Okay, rifampicin. Okay. Or doxycycline. Or doxycycline. But doxycycline has to be there in oral regimes. Huh? Whatever regime you start, doxycycline has to be there. Yeah. So, this would be the thing. So, but like I said, so because the patient has septic arthritis, the good chances of cross-reactivity would be high. Hmm, so, IgM can be positive Post even in septic, septic arthritis. arthritis. So, in that case, for a definitive diagnosis, either a, um, ideally bone, bone marrow culture has to be taken or a PCR yeah. has to be done. So, but because this patient was improving, there wasn't a necessity mm -hmm. to go ahead and prove it to be brucellosis. Okay. Then, uh, apart from this, the patient has to be given adequate rest and analgesia. And then, then DVT prophylaxis, bed sores have to be so frequent changing and nutrition. Okay. Sugar? He's a diabetic. Uh, sugars were controlled, sir. Controlled with? Sugars with. Uh, insulin, short-acting insulin. insulin. Anything else, sir? Yes, sir. Anything you want to add? Uh, basically, if a patient is coming with uh, like a left knee swelling, uh, we could think about arthritis or maybe like an acute trauma. So, initially, we assess like any other patient. We give like uh, analgesics and some called ice pack or something. We go a detailed history. So, we are suspecting arthritis. It could be either an infective or a non infective arthritis. Infective could be a septic arthritis. Or if you are. Only thing is, mm. before uh, making a proper clinical diagnosis, don't give. Pain mm. delays because uh, it will mask the mm. signs of information. Mm. Patient may not tell any pain. Mm. So that means you need to assess the patient. Doctor. Mm. So try to avoid uh, pain delays before examining. Mm. Once you examine, you find that yes, we have pain in the mm. pain delays. Mm. So one thing is thorough examination. Uh, second is imaging is required, and third is retail history is required. So infinity could be like a septic arthritis, or maybe secondary to gonorrhea. We can if you understand sexual history. And then any travel straight to the travel to epidemic areas, it could be Lyme disease or even tuberculosis can be there. Yeah, what adjunct you can use for this? 
Uh, start with the simple basic X-ray ultrasound. or ultrasound. Ultra ultra sound. Mm. Ultra sound join we can do, mm. and we can see what is the joint space, whether it is collapsed or not, if it is there. All mm. these things are easily can be done mm. in here. Mm. X-ray means uh, your patient has to stand and take an mm. X-ray, see the space in between uh, two joints. Mm -hmm. What is the osteopenic findings in the bones? Mm. And also the pain can be secondary, the arthritis can be secondary to viral infections also, like chikungunya, dengue, or can be involved with joint? Uh, multiple. Uh, Mid joints. Uh, angle joint. Angle joint. Predominant, mm -hmm. it's an angle joint disorder, mm -hmm. mainly. You can mm -hmm. see, patient who is having can box mainly come with angle joint swelling. Mm -hmm. That is very common percentage. Mm -hmm. And rarely fungal can also be a cause for infective pathology. And non-infective, non the first one will be traumatic arthritis. Second, it can be crystal induced, like acute gout can be presenting with this thing. Then maybe secondary to rheumatoid. Suppose you see, if you are suspecting gout, is an alcoholic patient, hmm. gouty arthritis, but uric acid is low. What hmm. do you do? Acute stage of gout. Acute stage Acute is stage. Really low, so hmm. it will be very difficult. Hmm. Now you have to aspirate and see whether crystals are Crystal. there. Hmm. Negative to what, what, what is the treatment if they float? Uricosuritis. NSAIDs and anti-inflammatory. NSAIDs are there, but hmm. what uh, drug reduces the inflammation of the joint? Cortisone. Cortisone. Give cortisone, not. Not the drug which is used in code properties. Like alipurinol, it should not be used. Alipurinol and cibuxestat should not be used in a code. It is cortisone with an acid, then relieve the pain, then start fibuxestat or cortisone. Then it could be reactive arthritis or maybe secondary to rheumatoid arthritis. Reactive arthritis means what? Maybe secondary to some other infection like a recent... It's because after a... Uh, uh, genital infection mostly Most time. Most is genital infection. Mm -hmm. Genital mm -hmm. to urinary tract infection, mm -hmm. sexually, uh, sexually transmitted disease, mm -hmm. or some other UTI. Previously, it was called as. It uh, is disease. disease. It is only reactive arthritis. Mm -hmm. What is Ponset disease? Ponset disease. Ponset. Ponset disease is a reactive arthritis due to tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. They also present like this. Mm -hmm. They develop uh, lower limb joint involvement or uh, angulus in spondylitis like features. Pod spine is different. Pod mm. spine is TB involvement of the spine. spine. This is pond set disease. Mm. So, any of these cases, we especially we have a uh, swelling around the uh, affected ankle with some correction in the synovial uh, cavity. So, our treatment plan will be like to drain that fluid, either through arthroscopy or any other through procedure, we have to drain the fluid and send that uh, fluid for microscopy. We go look for a gross overview of After the... After draining, what do you have to do? You have to wrap uh, the fluid and what do you do? You have to give it compression, com compression and then uh, you have to give a traction. traction uh, Otherwise, again, uh, that once yeah. you give a traction, there mm. will be joint space and mm. movement will be reduced. Mm. If you don't put a traction, again, again you move the limb and again, mm. information. Mm. It's mm. always better to give a traction and keep the limb mm. complete first. Mm. So, we either using arthroscopy or any other procedure, we give a complete washout and send the sample for microscopy along with uh, this gram staining and also culture. So which we can uh, see any affected this thing is there and also we have to send for blood cultures also sometimes actually the blood infections can again uh, sweep into the cerebral fluid causing a secondary infection so according to that we can start on as we already descri described the broad spectrum treatment can be started so any patient initial management will be first thing is to drain the affected limb arthroscopy or otherwise then start on a broad spectrum antibiotic and depending on the cultures then be uh, focused on the affecting leg like, organism and again, as we already discussed, all other supportive elements like uh, early um, mobilization after the pain has subsided and also DVD prophylaxis and all uh, supporting treatment also should be uh, started like concomitantly. So this patient is overall clinically improving right now uh, with the reduced inflammatory markers, his mobility is slowly, slowly improving and so already we have started all the discussed medications already. And so please go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.